Hey kids, welcome back. So I'm still in lesson 10 and before I was so rudely interrupted by my Wi-Fi cutting out because I was almost at the end of this lesson, um, we were working on problem number five. So I just want to make sure you guys get this whole problem done because the end of it is the hardest part. So we had completed uh, everything up to uh, number C and if you're just tuning in because this is the first time you've seen it, then just know that uh, you have to take the data from the table and set up expressions and solve and then plug in those numbers for where uh, it says like in June. And so solve for June by using a 4th of July. Solve for September by taking uh, January and July combined and then 3 fourths as much as that. So anyway, that's what's happening in these above. And if you were tuned in and then watch me get cut off, so rude. You should subscribe just so you can see what goes wrong every day, every day, something, something weird. Anyhow, we are almost at the end. And so in April, she bought half gallon less than twice as much as she bought in August. Here's twice as much as August. And then I was talking about uh, having to put subtraction after because it's half gallon less than that. And so you have to find it, take away the one half, and you get one and a half. And so put that in for April. Okay, so there's your one and a half, and I think I got cut off right around that point. So now we get to display the data from the table in a line plot. And so you don't have to have a ruler if you don't want. It's like not that hard. Make a relatively straight line. And look at what the data is between. So what's the smallest number and what's the biggest number? So I have numbers that range between, um, I mean, I, can, I always like to start at zero if I can. And I do have one fourth of one, so we can start at zero. But how high do they go? And nothing really goes uh, much higher than three. Three and three fourths is gonna be the highest, so our top number will be four. And so if you wanna put the two in the middle and then put your top and bottom numbers here, then split each one. So it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four. And remember with a line plot, you wanna figure out how many pieces to break it into. So on the other video, when I was talking about leaving things at fourths, try to make all your fractions into fourths so that everything is consistent. It'll make it so much easier. So one and one half is pretty easy to leave at one half, but you can also do one and two fourths. And now I have all of my data in equal parts in fourths. So put fourths on your number line, Put split each one into half and then half the half and half the other half. And now I have fourths for everything. So now you're just gonna go from the top down in the chart and you're going to put an X for each month, okay? So you go to uh, January and you go an X at three and then you have an X at two and then one and one fourth and then one and two fourths and then seven fourths, four goes into seven one whole time. It's almost two times, but it's not. And so we have one and three fourths. And then we have two fourths, which is the one half that's our small data. And then we have two, that's another one at two, so stack it up. Then we have one at one, and we have three and three fourths. And then we have one fourth, boop. And so your data, line plot should look like this. Check and make sure you have all the right hash marks. And then the last question says, how many gallons of milk did Colette buy from January to October? So that means how much is the total of all of these? So it's kind of a lengthy expression, but you just need to go right down from the top to the bottom like you did with the X's and add everything up. And again, use fourths because you want everything to be easy for your adding. Two plus one. I bet the janitor's gonna come in because I hear them cleaning. Okay, so 
when you have this much data and it's all the same sign, it's all pluses, I like to narrow it down slowly. Can you do it your way? Sure, you can do it your way, but I like to take things in small parts just to try to not make mistakes. I mean, you don't wanna make mistakes, do you? So if you put together the small chunks And you don't have to group in this order. Like one of our strategies was, oh, add up all the whole numbers first, then add up all the fractions. And I think that's the way the book does it. But I like to kind of group things so that it's a little bit easier. And even if I get an improper fraction, that's fine. I'll deal with that later. And if you feel like not putting uh, three and four fourths and you just want to do three plus one, that's totally fine too. And so um, at this point, you could probably start combining all your whole numbers and fractions. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then all of our fourths. So five, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then that is, of course, equal to 3 and then you should end up with 17. And so finally, that's your answer that we didn't get to share on the last video. It's a good thing you guys weren't here in class because I was not happy about that. It's never fun to get cut off. It's like rude. Anyway, I hope you guys have a super great day and I will see you on the next video. Tune in next time to see what can go wrong. Have a good one.